Hello, everybody. I'm here with the Brother LS2400. Um, when it came to me, it looked like it was stored literally in a garage for too many years, and it had a lot of buggy, um, bug, I say buggy, I mean bugs, um, a lot of rust, which I quickly took a lot of the rust out. And I kind of like, and the pedal was all rusted. It really wasn't working anymore. So I, I yanked it out and took the cord and everything out of it. And I just had a lot of like threads. See, I don't know if you can see the threads and dust bunnies and lots and lots of bugs. And uh, I cleaned it all out. So I just want to show you that. And I got it sewing really, really well. And this was all rusted. There's a bar across here that was rusted to clean that up. Each little section down inside is a little rusted, but I can't get all the rust out. It'll work itself out. I oiled them up really, really good. The, the rewinder here works. So let's go over this really quick for you, okay? This is your tension. This is your needle placement, which is really cool if you're trying to do a certain project. This here is your zigzag. I need to move it back out of the zigzag. I'm going to turn it back this way. This is the length, so we have, uh, I have it on three. Um, this is your base stitch. If you ever put your um, dial somewhere around here, it won't reverse, okay? It's just made so it won't reverse. Um, one will give you a teeny bit of reverse, but then you, if you put it further this way, it will reverse, okay? Because I don't want people freaking out saying, oh my, she won't reverse. Well, if they put it in zero or in this called fast mode, it will not reverse, okay? Don't think that you broke it. It's just something it does. But anyway, the reverse does work. Um, the turn on button, which I already have it turned on, is here. This is the um, um, hand wheel. It makes it go. It, hand wheel means it turns this way towards you. means the machine's going forward. Backwards is back this way. Um, let's go over this really quick. Uh, now, you can thread. This is like a newer spool. You can thread either way. Um, older spools, you want to throw it from the back because they make they make them so you can't really thread them the other way because they get caught. Anyway, you go this way, and there's diagrams that tells you what to do. Then go this way. This was actually crooked and rusted, but I got it pretty much cleaned and got it down where it belongs. And then up this way, down through here, around. Before you even get here, make sure your foot is in the highest position. Opens those chambers up. Now you can see you'll see a little bit of rust, but that's cleaned off. It's just what's a, it damaged the uh, metal. Anyway, it goes around, comes up, goes this way around this area here to the uptake, down this way. Now, if it's not in the uptake, it won't pull it through the material and it gets all clumped up on top. So you want to make sure that's even on there, okay? And it goes down this way, goes into this hookup. And then into the needle. Now, um, these um, machines like 14s. So 14s is what it recommends for this machine. Um, you can go lighter and you can go heavier. But you have to, you know, when you put it in the machine, you got to let the machine, like when you put the material through, you get a sampler and put it in there. So the machine can set itself up because it's, it has a, you know, pressure foot. This is your pressure foot adjuster inside. And that, that was really rusted. I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't even get the feed dogs to work. So it took me a while to get that all that rust off. It's now super duper clean. This looks like a brand new machine inside now. And I'm going to let you um, guys hear this. And then we'll go over the, the rewind. Okay. Here we go. Now it's a little rough because, you know, hey, it's not been sewing a long time. It has a lot of oil. So I might have to... Don't send anything through just yet because it takes a while for the, the oil to work itself out. So anyway, let's get this over here. And then you can see, you can see the oil. There's lots of oil in it. So if I were you, I'd run it a few times before I put it on any clothes or anything like that just to get the oil out of it, okay? Now that oil there is, you know, somebody used um, like car oil or something, bicycle oil, and it comes out black. So it took me a while to get all that out. And my oil is more of a white color, so it would be like a white clear color. Let's see, keep on going here. And make it now, see, it's starting to feel better. Reverse it. Go back this way. Like this. And I always put the needle down, down like this to turn it. Like that. Back down this way, pick it back up on the highest point, and then I go ahead and I turn my dial for zigzag. So I usually move it to three, 
Okay, I'm good to three. Yeah, that's about three. And then you can actually see it zigzag. It will reverse and zigzag. Okay, let's go up. Now let's take it down. Move it. All right. I'm going to move it. Okay. And you can see it is sewing correctly. And nothing's pulling through. It just takes time for all the oil to work itself out. Because I put lots and lots of oil in this to try to get it to uh, move. <laughs> anyway. just wanted to show you. The machine is working properly. These people can pick up their machine today. Hopefully they'll come soon. Because I'm going to go for a nice long walk. And I really don't want to be in the house all day. And i got to work with the chickens a little bit. Now let's go back to this area here. And I'm going to go forward again. Okay, no, you want to... Base stitch is your... Uh, base stitch is your gathering stitch. This is your basic sewing between two and one. This is fine sewing if you're doing something like super fine. Um, if you want to put it here and then move this to there, you'll get a real fine wave. If you move it here, you'll get a like a, a binding thing where it binds up a hole or whatever. I mean, it's a basic sewing machine to do basic work, which is, um, you can do quilting on it, but it's not, I mean, it's good for like patchwork quilting, but it wouldn't be any crazy quilting because there's not very many stitches it can do. Anyway, let's go on and talk about the, the bobbin rewinder. This thing works. I couldn't believe it. The belt and the tire are in really good condition for having it sitting in the garage or wherever they kept it at. Um, you want to thread it again this way. Then instead of going through this, you're going to go around this. Okay? Then you come back this way, put it, your bobbin there, drop it down on there, and then click it over. When you click it over like this, let's see, let's see, do this, click it over, the clutch comes in play. It means it pulls it back this way. The machine will not sew, but it will turn. So I'm going to give you a show. See, you can hear it. See, the machine's not moving because this is rewinding and it's got its own clutch. It shuts the clutch off. When you click it back, it causes the clutch to rehook back up and the machine moves. Isn't that cool? Now, it does make a really weird noise. That's normal. Um, hey, it's been sitting so long forever. So, but it does sew. And go back up again. Go forward. And I had, I think when I was looking at it, I told them that there's a lot of issues, but we'll get them all, all figured out. So just bear with the sewing machine. It's going to be a little oily at first. I would do it. I'd just take a bunch of material and like literally run it. And run it and run it and run it until all the oil works itself out. And it's a good way to practice, too, because, you know, if you haven't run the machine in so many years, it's hard to know if the machine is even coming out pretty much, you know. Uh, you know. Oh, man, I can't stand when I do that. You ever have that, you know, get your hand caught in there? There we go. Right All right. And this way, if you run the machine, you get used to it again, and you're not going to be so afraid to run it, okay? Now... Um, I don't know if the mo the mother that you will know, appreciate having this um, little creature done, but this is a bottom feed. So let me show you. Get this thing off. This thing I always don't like about these brother sewing machines is bottom feed ones because these things are hard to get off. And it just drives you nuts. Oh, there you go. Anyway, I cleaned that out as much as I could. There's still a little gaps and yuck in it, but I tried. It's just real hard and. I clean most of this out. It's just, and whatever's left over of the rust will keep coming down and hitting places. So, you just keep it cleaned out. But that's your bottom feed right there. And then you just close this up. It shows you the instructions on how to tear it apart, clean it up, put the oil like around the edge here, and then right back that way. Okay? And it tells you how to put it back in. Make sure your needle is in the highest position. In other words, this is not the highest. This is down. The highest position would be up in here, okay? And then when you put this all together, it'll all fit perfectly, and then you click it back on. See, it shows you here how you click it back on, and there's a little hole there that has a little um, knob, and that knob has to fit in that little hole. But it looks a lot cleaner than it was. I don't know how if they even looked how bad it was, but it uh, is a lot cleaner. Now, this thing, it's just, you want to take this off if you're doing pant legs or sleeves so you can get them around. Okay, I'm going to put this back up there. 
I'm going to put this back in there. This one kind of hooks down into it and pops up like that. Anyway, I hope you guys get something out of this. Um, a lot of people love watching me because I explain it all to you. A lot of people even ask me odd, strange questions. Now, I don't have these machines with me. These are people sewing machines. So don't, you ask me questions, I can give you basics or get you a manual and help you with it, okay? But why people um, place their needle in the middle is because zigzagging is easier. But if you're working on something as a straight stitch and you need it to the left or to the right, it kind of helps you guide yourself. Now, whenever you want to, you know, if you're doing something that's going to be coming out to here, use um, painter's tape and put it across here. It doesn't get a sticky scum mess on it. So I always tell people just use that. Don't use masking tape. It will stick to the machine and you can't get the slime off. Duct tape's worse. Um, you might end up, a lot of machines are painted, you know, and, and that pulls the paint right off, and you don't want that either. So the tension's working perfectly. Um, light bulb's in great condition. The belt is in good condition. The tire is in great condition. Um, the only thing that was wrong is things were stuck. Like, this was stuck. It wouldn't come loose. It was really hard to move. The reverse was stuck. It took me a while to get all the rust off of it. And then when I got it cleaned up and everything, I, you know, greased it really well. And now it's moving really nice. This area here was stuck. This was stuck. Um, so everything's not stuck no more. This was a little screwy and it took a while to get this clutch to hook up. But after that, the machine works great. And I can't wait to get it back to them. Um, all the junk and trash I get out of a sewing machine goes back to the people so they can see and look at everything that wasn't bad. It was bad in the sewing machine. So they know next time, not, don't stick it in the garage and store it. Put it in a closet. It's a better place for it. It might get stuck in time where then what happens is if it hasn't been oiled in a long time, it'll things just don't move. And then you can just bring it in and get a basic cleaning. And then I just come in and I just, it's mostly here and here is what needs to be oiled. If it gets, if it gets to where the knobs don't work, then it needs a deep cleaning because I have to go back in and pop this whole thing off and look to see what's going on with the knobs and it takes a while to figure it out but i get them done anyway um if you have a sewing machine like this i'd love to hear from you um love to hear from you if you're working on a project or you can't get something to run right maybe i can give you suggestions um but i hope you have a great blessed day talk to you guys later Bye bye